and we are so excited because he joins us now here on NHL Tonight. Roberto, congratulations first and foremost on your Hockey Hall of Fame induction upcoming. First ballot for you. Have you had a chance to really just have it all soak in for you yet? Just what have the emotions been like since the news came out? Well, first of all, hi, guys, and thank you. Uh, you know what? It's been a great uh, great few days, to be honest with you. It uh, hasn't totally 100% soaked in yet. I don't think the, the magnitude of it actually hasn't soaked in yet. So uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, next couple months leading up to it. Uh, I look forward to it. And funny, I was looking at that graph you guys had up with, with Marty Brodeur, and I was like, man, I need another 10, 15 years at least to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> it wins, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't think I could have made it. So <laughs> I, I know what a list, what a list, and you're you're up towards the top of that in a lot of different categories, man. So congratulations to you. I, I want to ask you, just I, I think, and we just said it off camera. Even it's so cool that a that you're, you're dude, you're gonna, you're a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Like that's got it. Just that part, and you just said it's got to sink in. But how cool is it that you get to go in there with buddies, right? The Sedines. Like this is so cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, that's one of the best parts. You know, I, I was. Uh, I was really excited when I saw them. Uh, you know, they were they were eligible the same year as me, and given that they didn't, there was no Hall of Fame last year. So uh, it was something that I thought about a lot when when our names were on the same list. And uh, when I found out they were, I was I was ecstatic for for them, you know, uh, and for myself as well because it's going to be so much more of a cooler experience to be there with them and cherishing that moment with them. Roberto, when you play as long as you do and have as many wins and you do so many good things throughout your illustrious career, and which led to the Hall of Fame, is there a couple of things that could that stand out that, that you're most proud of off the top of your head? Well, to me, it's one thing. Um, you know, I, the most thing I'm most proud of is the longevity that I have, and that's because every year when I played, I always – tried to be the best goalie in NHL, and that meant that I was never satisfied with, mm. you know, the level I was playing at. I always looked to be better every day. I was always willing and open-minded to learn new techniques of goaltending and, and improve my game. I wasn't stuck in my ways, and uh, I always was looking for the next possible thing that could help me out, and I think that's what kept me in the league so long. Well, we're having uh, some chatting with you off camera here for a second, but I'm sure over these next few months are going to be reflecting so much on those special moments, that longevity, and I'm sure a lot of memories will come to your mind. But as you prepare to give that speech, too, just what should we expect there? Emotion, some more fun, like we see from you all the time on Twitter. What should we expect? <laughs> I'm going to try to bring a little bit of everything. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, usually when, I, when I'm getting ready for speeches, uh, I don't want to write too much stuff down. I try to, you know, maybe have a couple points that I want to touch on. Uh, but the rest of it, I usually just, uh, you know, say what comes from the heart. And that uh, comes out more natural. Sometimes I remember when I was in school and I was younger, I would try to memorize a whole, a whole oral or whatever, and I would, I would stumble all the time. So for me, it's easier to just, you know, just t talk from the heart and make sure that I hit on the key points that I want to make and uh, just let it go and see where it goes. Uh, I want to ask you this a little, little off the wall to some degree, but I, I'm serious. I, I really do wonder this. And when you look at that list and you're, again, at the, towards the top of it, why? what do you think, if you can put your thumb on, is some of our best goalies our game has ever seen are all French-Canadian? You know what I mean? You've got Marty. You've got Patty. You've got Flower, yourself. Like, I mean, there's more. But, you know, yeah. what do you, what's the reason by that, do you think? Well, I think I think Patty is actually one of the main reasons. You know, uh, if you go back to before Patty, you know, we had Jacques Plante, Ken Dryden play for the Canadians. But I think once Patty rolled around, everybody tried to play like him. He kind of changed the game, revolutionized the goaltending position. And you know, the first people that saw first hands were the people from Quebec, and we watched them play every night. And everybody tried to be like him. So that's why there was a certain period of time there were so many goalies from Quebec that were in the NHL, and now it's kind of leveled off, and uh, you know, the, the rest of the world has caught up to us. Uh, but for that one, you know, period of 10, 15 years while Patty was playing and the next generation was coming up, I think that's why there was so many Quebec goalies that were there. Roberto, to have such an illustrious career like you did, there's a lot of people along the way, I'm sure, at your Hall of Fame speech you're, you're going to thank. But is there somebody, uh, a coach or two, or, or a veteran player when you came into the league that was really uh, influential in, you, in your game and your career and uh, moving forward? Well, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a ton of people, but uh, you know, if I go coaching wise, I think for me, the the, the guy that really changed uh, what goaltending was about for me, uh, you know, when I when I was a kid and I wanted to be goalie, I was looking at Grant Fuhrer, who was my idol, and 
if you remember Grant Fuhrer, a lot of his saves were split saves, glove saves. Everything was spectacular. And when I started learning about the position and trying to really, you know, make a name for myself and, and, and become a, a professional, uh, Francois Allaire is, is the one that I started working with, which was the goalie coach of Patrick Waugh with the Canadians. And I would work with him every summer. And, and he really uh, taught me about the techniques of the game, playing the percentages, the butterfly, all that kind of stuff. And I think that's what really took me to the next level and got me drafted into the NHL and, and made me become an NHL goalie. All right, well, we see you wearing the uh, Panthers polo, of course, where you are now an executive with the Cats. So I'm sure you would have liked to see your team advance further and, and make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. But you got to see a, a great battle between Tampa and, of course, Colorado, who are our champions. What were your big takeaways from the, the finals in general and this year's playoffs? Well, first of all, that, that was an unbelievable, great series, a great pace. Uh, it was exciting to watch. It would have been nice to go seven games. Uh, but, uh, you know, when it came to, uh, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning, obviously they've been there. They knew what it took to win. And they got uh, arguably the best goaltender in the world that can win a series on his own. So, um, you know, they have to find ways to beat him. And uh, Colorado was able to do that. And that's why they, they won the Stanley Cup. Uh, I want to know if there's a story behind, <coughs> excuse me, behind uh, Bobby Lou. And saying Bobby Lou and hearing the chance Lou and, and where did that come from was that is that a nickname obviously you play off your name there but like is that a was it a teammate started doing there was a fan base that started doing that how'd that come about you know what I'm not sure I know it started in Vancouver because when I was uh, my first year with the Islanders my nickname was Bert I don't know I don't know who, who made that one up I, not one not one of my favorite ones but uh, uh, Mike, you know, then, uh, then Mike, was, Mike made that one up Milbury made that one up <laughs> yeah, I think probably. <laughs> Uh, then I was in Florida with just Lou, and then when I got to Vancouver, I'm not sure if it started in the media or, or something, and, and it kind of caught on, and everybody went with it. So it, it went to Bobby Lou, and that's when the chance started at the rink. And uh, you know, now we're back to pretty much Louis or Lou. So we're we've been all over the map with that one. Uh, all right, Bobby Lou. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> kind of play off Rupper there, and he mentioned New York Islanders, and you were the highest goaltender drafted at the time. Uh, at number five of uh, the year you were drafted to the New York Islanders. Everybody goes through uh, times in their career. Sometimes it's as soon as you're drafted as far as adversity. And tell us a little bit about that adversity because you're expected to be the franchise goaltender for the Islanders and all of a sudden, a little craziness. We're not going to elaborate, but they decide to trade you. How, how did that affect you moving forward? That must have toughened you up for sure because I, I don't think that could be easy on any young player who's so highly touted. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a bit of a strange uh, situation, to be honest with you. You know, my first year with the Islanders, we had, you know, our team wasn't very good. We were rebuilding, and it was my first year, and, and I had some ups and downs, which was normal for a 20, 21 year old. And um, the day of the draft, which is weird, uh, Rubber, uh, Rupper, our buddy Weeks, he was uh, was my <laughs> partner, and he gets traded uh, an hour before the draft. Uh, I don't remember where he got traded to, to be honest with you, uh, but uh, so an hour later, when I got the call. Uh, I thought they were calling me to let me know that I was going to be the starter the following year and that, that they were giving me the ball, chance to roll with it. But uh, no, unfortunately, it was not. They were treating me to Florida. So uh, I was kind of uh, in shock, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, uh, when you're young, you know, those things don't affect you as much. And, and I was able to, um, you know, get to Florida and, and find my way. And, you know, that's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, absolutely. Things certainly worked out, and uh, I love hearing all the memories and walking down memory lane, but if you could just kind of fill us in on your new role and what you're enjoying most about working with the Florida Panthers and what we should be expecting from them uh, come next year. Yeah, well, uh, right now I, I, I do a few things. I mean, my, my title is a special advisor to the GM, so I'm with, uh, you know, Bill Zito's uh, uh, pretty much involved me in every everything uh, hockey-related, which, which I love doing. Um, you know, being part of daily decisions and roster construction, all that kind of stuff, which is great. And I also run the uh, goaltending excellence department. Uh, so we take care of all our goalies in the organization. I get ready for the draft and who's, who's uh, where the goalies upcoming in the draft. We scout them all year. We rank them and we make sure that, uh, you know, if we get a chance to pick a goalie, we take the right one. Uh, and I'm learning. I'm basically learning every day, um, you know, trying to learn as much as I can what, it, what it's like on a daily day a basis to be a manager. And um uh, I love every minute of, it, a minute of it, and I knew that, uh, you know, when my career ended, it's something that was interesting to me, and uh, so far, it's already been three years, believe it or not, but uh, I'm having a great time.
I love that. Well, you were a model of consistency on the ice during your playing career and certainly embracing this role as well. Roberto Luongo, thank you so much for the time and congratulations once again on being an inductee in this year's uh, Hall of Fame class. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.